Welcome to Electron Line. Now let's take a look at a cable with a distributed load, but in this case it's called a non-uniform distributed load because as you can see the forces vary as we go along the cable, the forces of the load. How do you analyze a cable like that? Well, the best thing to do is to first find the lowest point in the cable, we'll label that C, we still have the endpoints A and B, and then we pick any other point on the cable, let's label that one D. So we'll take that section right here and move it over to the right. So this is our section of the cable from C to D. C is the lowest point on the cable, D can be any other point on the cable. The tension here will be different than the tension there. Again, remember in a cable, the horizontal component, the X component of the tension will be the same everywhere along the cable and it will be the same as the X support points or the, the what we call the reactionary force at the support points at A and B. But the vertical components, the Y components of the tension will vary and will depend upon the steepness of that section of the cable. Therefore, T will increase as we move farther away from C and the cable becomes steeper and steeper and steeper. Now, on that particular section of cable from C to D, we have various load forces. If we do the resultant force, if we calculate, we don't do the force, but if we calculate the force, the resultant force W, they'll simply be the sum of all the forces, all the load forces on the section from C to D. Also note, that when we get to some other point besides the lowest point on the cable, there always will be an angle between the horizontal line and the direction of that cable at that point. And therefore, since we know that the tension is, a, is in the same direction as the cable at that particular point, then we have the same angle between the horizontal line and the tension on the cable at that particular point D. The best way to analyze the forces on a section of cable like that is to draw a triangle of the three forces involved. What are the three forces? We have T sub zero at the lowest point on the cable. We have T, the tension at any other point on the cable D. And then we have the resultant load on the cable section between C and D. If we then draw these three forces, they will look as follows. So we have the load force W in this direction. We have T sub zero in this direction, and then we have the force T in this direction. This becomes W, this here is T sub zero, and this here is T, and this angle right here is the angle theta between T and the horizontal line. So that's what we've done. We've done a vector sum of these three forces, and that's what it looks like. Of course, realizing that these three are indeed vectors. Now some relationships between these. First of all, you can see that the tension, which is the hypotenuse of this triangle, is going to be equal to the square root of the tension at the lowest point squared, T sub naught squared, plus the resultant load on the section W squared. We can also see that the, let's see here, what other relations do we have? So looking at this relationship here, we can see that the tangent of theta, the tangent of theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side, which is the net weight or the resultant load, I should say, not net weight, but the resultant load on the cable divided by the, let's see, T sub naught. A couple more equations you may want to come up with in a situation like this is we want to be able to maybe express T sub naught in terms of T or T in terms of T sub naught. It's probably better to express T sub naught in terms of T because it's one of the legs of the triangle. So we can all go over here. We can say that T sub naught is equal to the hypotenuse T times the cosine of the angle, cosine of the angle theta. So we have that equation. We have this equation. And we have this equation. And then maybe one more. How do we express W, the weight of the sections relative to the tension here? We can say that the weight of the load, W, is equal to the hypotenuse T times the sine of theta. So here you can see that we have some various relationships between the resultant load on the section of cable, the tension at the very lowest point on the cable, the tension at any point along the cable that we choose, 
and you can see here that's different ways of expressing these various components but that's how you want to look at a cable that has a non-uniform distributed load again simply take out a section of cable make sure that one end of the cable is at the lowest point and then D will can be at any other point along can be on the left side on the right side of C and then you analyze the cable as follows using this simple method of a triangle made up of the three forces involved on that section of cable and that's how it's done